Hey everybody, Mike here with another Roll20 short. Today I'm going to talk about integrating d d Beyond with Roll20 and talk about why I like it so much. So the first thing you have to do is install the Beyond20 extension for Chrome or Firefox. I'll put that link down in the blah 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 below. Go to the Chrome Web Store or the Firefox Web Store or whatever install what's there. It puts this little icon up here, Beyond 20, and that's really all you have to do. You go into D&D Beyond, and from there, you'll see this Beyond 20 thing came, come up. You're going to want to click on that and change some settings. I will change that so when I'm a player, I never whisper. When I DM, I change it to always whisper. Or you can do ask every time, but that is a little tedious. So I wouldn't do that. Type of roll, I always roll twice. If we have advantage or disadvantage, then we can use that. If we just have a regular die roll, then I use the left-hand one. Always a good idea. Add the quick roll areas. I'll show that in a little bit. I do not force critical hits. I'm not sure why you would want to. Go here, click for more options. You see the ones you already saw. Auto roll damage and crit, absolutely. That way you just click on the roll one time and it rolls the damage. If, it, if you get a crit, it will roll the critical damage as well. Add initiative to turn tracker. This is uh, broken right now because d, d Beyond updated and added dice rollers for those of us who subscribe to d, d Beyond. If you don't subscribe, this still works. I'll talk about that when we get to the virtual tabletop. Critical hit rule, I use the standard rule, don't force all criticals, update the virtual tabletop token hit points. So this allows you, if you change your hit points in D&D Beyond, it will update the hit points in Roll20. Display condition updates in the virtual tabletop, I did that. When you create a character in Roll20, you want to make sure that you have this one selected, D&D 5th Edition by Roll20. Replace the dice formulas, so it'll show all the different dice things that happen. Replace the formulas, sure, sure. Add the button to stat blocks. I'll show that when we get to D&D Beyond, absolutely. Display components. I usually don't use components in my games, or I don't worry about it a lot. Do not display anything, display a little bit. Display them all. It's really up to you and your dungeon master. Um, so you can actually integrate this with Discord. I haven't tried that yet. And that's about it. Save. OK. Now, when you're in D&D Beyond, once you have a character set up, you can see that if you scroll over, anything that would be rollable, you get that little red die, and that shows that it's going to send that. It's going to use D&D &D Beyond or Beyond 20 to send something from here when you roll. You notice it doesn't do that with initiative. Like I said, that part's broken right now. That's kind of unfortunate. If you go over here and you look, I have Wizzo. So in Roll 20, and I assume in the Foundry, the character sheet has to be set up a specific way. So it has to have the same exact name that it represents in here that it does in D&D Beyond. Same spelling, I think probably the same capitalization. If you set the bar to update, I always set the first bar to hit points and the second bar to armor class. If you change those things in D&D Beyond, it will change here and I'll show that happen in a little bit. Before that works, if you shift and double click on there, you can bring up the character sheet. You have to set this hit points to zero the very first time that you use that. After that, you don't have to worry about setting it up. What I've done is I put in the dexterity 15 so that I have initiative here so that I can roll initiative within roll 20. Um, the developer of this is pretty good at fixing things pretty quickly from what I'm told. So we should see this update so that initiative works again pretty soon. So let's just go through a couple things. I'm going to just roll a constitution save. And when you click on something, it will bring up this right sidebar. But you don't have to worry about that. 
you can actually see over here that it made a constitution save, it rolled twice, a six, so a four plus two and a 16 plus two. If I had advantage, I'd use this one, disadvantage, I'd use this one, a regular roll, I'd use this one. When you're using a weapon, you don't click on the name. If you click here, it's gonna roll the to hit separately from the damage. If you click on this icon to the left of the word quarterstaff, it will roll. I rolled a, yeah, I rolled a 19 plus one or a three plus one. So it shows if I use it just regular five, if I use it two handed, I got a six. So obviously I'd have to say ahead of time which way I was attacking. It's the same uh, with unarmed strike. I'm plus one to hit. I rolled a three and I rolled a four. That's not really good. So why would you do this instead of using the roll 20 sheet? Well, first off, you can create a character in D&D Beyond and have that character all the time. If you go back to playing on a physical table, also anything that you own in D&D Beyond, you can use to create it there. So if you bought the player's handbook or Sword Coast, Coast, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, easy for other people to say, you have all that there. You don't have to buy it again in roll 20. And once you buy the player's handbook in D&D Beyond, you have it for all of your characters in all of your campaigns, as opposed to having to buy it in Roll20 and separately for your physical games. If you're a dungeon master and you have access to monsters, I don't have to buy any new monsters, anything that I own. If the Appleth is there. Ah. If I open it, the, the monster, sorry about that. If I actually open the monster page, you'll see all the roll 20 stuff come up. I can roll a tail attack. So rather than have to recreate all of your creatures in roll 20 that you've purchased or created in D&D Beyond, you have them all here. You don't have to drag them from a compendium someplace to get them into an adventure. When I run this, I have one screen set up to run my D&D Beyond and my Discord for voice, and I have another screen for the maps and when I'm and all the chat and everything that I'm seeing on Roll20. So, oh, I just took four points of damage. I update it in D&D Beyond, and there's that's updated to 10. I think I have a Barbarian. Let's see if there's anything specific to the character, specific options for Barbarians. Character specific, custom dice, custom dice rage. So when you're raging, you can turn that on. Great Axe. Rage. There you go. I believe there's a way to actually display on VTT. There you go. So that if the DM or you want to remember what the rules are, there it is. So how do you integrate it? First you install it as an extension. It'll show up here so that you know that it's installed. Then when you go into D&D Beyond, you'll see this Beyond 20 update these things to however you want them to be. I made some suggestions at the beginning. Then when you want to roll hover until you see the dice, the die, wherever you see the dice, you can roll. Don't forget, when you're doing an attack action, you roll on the icon, not on the word. If you roll here, you're just going to roll to hit. If you roll here, you're just going to roll damage. If you roll here and you have it set up that way, it will roll both. Spells the same way, where it says at will, or where it says cast. If you're a dungeon master, it's great because you don't have to add monsters. Just don't forget. Make sure you're actually on this looking page. I usually have two open. Or how many ever I need. So if the young Kruthics are attacking, I'll go to this tab. If the adults are going to this tab, he's stabbing. He's stabbing again, because he can. 
it's pretty simple. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate a like or a share down in the blah, blah, blah. In addition to the links to all of this stuff, uh, there's links to the one product I have for sale on DMs Guild. There's links to my website, which has information about how I'm playing Lost Minds of Fandelver with my group. I believe I will put a link to this great battle map online also. I love this battle map. It's available for free right now. So there you go. Have a wonderful day, everyone.